Hi, my name is Dr. Katie Van Valen. I'm an extension beef cattle specialist with the University of Kentucky. And on this week's episode of Beef Minutes, I want to talk to you a little bit about utilizing corn silage in our beef cattle operations. This will actually be a multi-part series. And on this week's episode, I'm going to talk about some things that we should consider before we even commit to putting corn in the ground for silage production. One of the first things I want our producers to be thinking about is how they're going to store and feed this corn silage out to their cattle. There are a lot of different options out there, including this an upright silo like the one behind me here, silage uh, bunkers, as well as silage bags. Now they all have different pros and cons to them. Um, one of the cons to an upright silo is going to be the expense of uh, putting one in as well as maintaining them. Uh, another con is that they take a long time to unload and load and so uh, it takes our farm crew here at the University of Kentucky Research and Education Center about 30 minutes a day uh, to operate this silo and so if labor um, is a factor for you this may not be the right way to go. Now one of the advantages to say an upright silo or a, a bunker is that we can get them packed more densely uh, usually than what we can a bag and so what that means um, is that we don't have to feed out quite as much silage every day um, to maintain a, what we call a fresh silage face or to limit spoilage and so um, we have to be thinking about how much we have to feed out in terms of depth every day um, and the more densely packed it is the less depth that we're, we're going to have to feed out on a daily basis to maintain a fresh space. Um, so for an uh, upright saddle or a bunker we can get by in the cooler months with only having to feed out 6 to 12 inches. Whereas on a bag, you're looking at more about a foot. Uh, and again, that's in the cooler months. In the warmer months, we're gonna have to feed out a lot more. And so uh, that's something to consider, if, especially if you're wondering about us using corn silage just as a, a winter feed source for your cow herd or uh, potentially feeding it year round. Those are different things that we've gotta consider. Now um, with bags, I think bags make a really nice option for a lot of folks uh, because they come in multiple different diameters. What that means is the actual amount of silage that we've gotta feed out uh, can be quite a bit lower uh, by using a bag uh, in order to still get that foot of depth off the face of that of that silage and so uh, for for example an eight foot diameter bag if we're going to feed out a, about a foot worth of depth uh, we're we're talking about feeding out about 1800 pounds of silage um, and so again those bags kind of get bigger from there and so you're going to be feeding more pounds of total silage on a daily basis to maintain a fresh silage face. So depending on the size of your herd and how much silage you're going to be feeding, uh, that's something to consider uh, before uh, we start uh, into uh, silage production. So again, we need to think about which system is going to work best for our particular operation based on the number of animals we're going to be feeding, how long we're going to, what time of year we're going to be feeding uh, silage, um, and how much uh, we'll be feeding on a daily basis. Some other things that we need to think about, uh, especially for bags, is where on the operation we place it. We want to make sure it's in a well-drained area away from tree lines um, because we actually want to limit the amount um, of rodents or varmints that we have um, wanting to access that corn silage bag because similar to haylage or baleage, if they get a tear in that bag, uh, we can actually get some aerobic fermentation, which we don't want, um, and that's going to cause uh, some rot, some uh, rotting and some spoilage. And so uh, keeping that bag on a, a well-drained area away from uh, tree lines and other uh, vegetation uh, will help with the rodent and varmint issues. Uh, the other thing that we need to make sure that we're doing with those bags is inspecting them regularly at least once a week and patching any holes that we might find. Um, that's going to help limit the amount of loss that we have um, which really helps improve the overall efficiency of feeding uh, corn silage to our cattle. Another thing to consider uh, before we commit to utilizing corn silage in our operation is selecting a hybrid of corn for silage production. We want to make sure that we're selecting a hybrid that's going to give us the best combination of yield and forage digestibility. And so the University of Kentucky has got a great corn silage hybrid evaluation program. Uh, there are some other resources uh, out there as well if you're outside of Kentucky, um, but I encourage you to take a look at those results to determine which hybrids are going to perform the best for your specific geographical region. 
So that's been this week's episode of Beef Minutes where we talked about some things to consider before we commit uh, to adding corn silage to our production uh, systems. And now next week, we will talk about some specifics of adding corn silage into the rations of our different classes of beef cattle. So thank you for joining us this week. Be sure to join us again next week as we continue our discussion about utilizing corn silage in our beef cattle operations. <music>